Aging populations. It's a thing you have to know for AP Human Geography Unit 2, so I reckon we ought to talk about it. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. Okay, first, as is our custom, let's define our terms. An aging population describes a population in which the proportion of elderly people is increasing, and that occurs generally for two reasons. First, the population is experiencing higher life expectancies, which usually is associated with better medical technologies and access to healthcare. And second, aging populations have lower crude birth rates. So that means fewer people are being born while more people are living into old age. In other words, it's a population that's aging. And that's really as simple as it is. And so, you know, like there's a lot more complicated terms in this course. So let's just take the win and enjoy it. All right, this is enough celebration. Oh, and by the way, if you want note guys to follow along with this video, then check the link below. Anyway, when a population begins aging, that comes with significant consequences. And I'm in the mood to talk about three categories of those consequences. First, an aging population experiences political consequences. For example, as a population ages, political power in that population can shift. So consider the United States. The most reliable voters by far in the US are folks older than 65. As retirees, they tend to live on a fixed income, which means that their income doesn't change from month to month because they're living on retirement savings or social security. And that means they are very motivated to vote against tax increases or policies that might lead to rising prices, etc. And so because the elderly vote in such high numbers as a population ages, they have increased voting power. And that further means that policies passed will likely reflect the interest of the older population, things like health care and social security, or another example of political consequences. As a population ages, governments must create policies to care for those older folks. And this is especially true in many European countries that have government paid health care systems. In those countries, big daddy government pays for the health care of its citizens, and as more and more aging people need access to that healthcare, it gets way more expensive and that will put a strain on the country's resources. Okay, now let's consider the social consequences of an aging population. Now to be fair, an aging population confers many social benefits like childcare for their working age children, but they simultaneously create some difficulties. And one major reason for this is the shifting of family structures across the world. Like the more a country industrializes, the more likely society is defined by the nuclear family instead of multi-generational households. Like when all generations of a family live together, the younger members care for the older members. But in the age of the nuclear family and increased migration, more and more elderly people are moving to retirement nursing facilities, which can create significant financial burdens for families. And then let's consider the economic consequences of an aging population. So another way we can understand an aging population is that as a population gets older, its dependency ratio increases. Recall that the dependency ratio is a comparison between the working age population and the non-working population, which includes people under the age of 15 and over the age of 64. And I know you're itching to see this visualized in a population pyramid, so let's look at it. Here we're looking at Japan's most recent population pyramid, and this is like the poster child for an aging aging population. Look, you can see how there are so many more older people than younger people. And yes, there is a bulge in the working age population, but in only a few years, they're moving up to the dependent category, and that's going to have some serious economic consequences. First, a country like Japan will likely face labor shortages. As fewer and fewer people are in the working age cohorts, economic growth will begin to slow, unless, of course, the government encourages immigration of working age folks from elsewhere. Second, as the dependency ratio increases, retirement programs like Social Security in the United States will struggle with funding. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and guess that you don't know how Social Security works, so let me just give you a quick explanation. It was a policy passed by the federal government in 1935 as a financial safety net for retired people. The idea was that the government would take some money out of your paycheck and then when you hit retirement age you could stop working and get paid from the government until you die. And in 1935 that was just fine because people in general live shorter lives so their payout wasn't nearly as much. But think about it, where does the money come from to keep social security funded? It comes from taxes paid by the current working age population. So now that better medicines and healthcare and nutrition have increased life expectancies there are more people retiring and living longer than there are working working people to pay for their retirement. And that is a, a big problem for the United States and they have not solved it yet. So, you know, fingers crossed. Okay, click here to keep reviewing for unit two and click here to grab my video note guides for this video and all my videos, which will help you follow along and get this information firmly crammed into your brain folds. Thanks for coming around and I'll catch you on the flip flop. I'm Lerout.